Hold on. Goodness. Well, Alexa be on one. <laughs> Sometimes I think my Alexa is uh hacked because out the blue you just gonna start playing the music again. You all right, whatever. But anywho, I'll start over. Fuck! You are a fucking piece of shit, Grady. Grady hissed to himself as he pounded his steering wheel repeatedly. After he sped away from Peter and Clara's house, he parked on a deserted blockbuster video lot. He opened a bottle of Jack Daniels and began to guzzle it down. Grady was a dangerous alcoholic, which was just a small part of a much larger, much uglier problem. He knew that he had lost the only woman that truly loved him. It was difficult for Grady to focus as incident after incident began to ran into each other in a maddening blur. He continued to drink as the memories of him hitting and abusing both Josephine and Marcus bombarded him. He pulled open the glove compartment and pulled out a cold black 44 Magnum Smith & Wesson. He sobbed as he replayed the last thing that Josephine said to him repeatedly in his head. I should have listened to my mama and I should have never married you. Grady fumbled his keys, unsuccessfully trying to quietly enter their humble three-bedroom townhouse. He wanted to sneak in after a long night of cheating with some hoe he had met at the neighborhood bar. When he came through the door, he saw all of Josephine's and Marcus's clothes packed by the door. Josephine had finally had enough. She wanted to leave Grady for good. Hey, Grady yelled with a slur through the back door. Oh, oh, I see, so, so we doing this shit again, he scoffed. Grady began to look around for Josephine. Where the fuck is you, Josie, he said in a mocking tone. Josephine and Marcus came down the stairs. Josephine looked Grady square in the eyes and said, wow, you didn't even bother to shower this time. I can still smell her filth on you. Grady felt his shame and lowered his eyes. Josephine turned almost mechanically and walked to the door. She began to grab their bags and Marcus followed suit. As soon as they were walking out of the door, Peter and Clara were pulling up into the driveway. Peter hopped out to help with the bags. There were no words spoken. After all of Josephine's and Marcus's things were loaded into the car, they left with oddly no opposition from Grady. Josephine looked back at the place that she no longer considered her home, but her prison and sighed, a sigh of relief as it got smaller and smaller through the back seat window. She grabbed her son and held him tightly. Meanwhile, Grady was livid. He couldn't believe how Josephine could let her nosy ass sister talk her into leaving him. Grady hated Clara and Peter because he felt that they were always butting in on his marriage. He was incredibly jealous of Peter because he knew that Peter was simply a better man than him. He would often say things like, I just can't understand how a fucking nigger gets a house built from the ground, or what does that black bastard need with so many cars anyway? Even though Grady was married to a fully black woman, he was extremely racist. Grady began to absentmindedly pace back and forth, back and forth on the same spotted linoleum in the kitchen. The abysmal chartreuse wallpaper that Josephine had begged him to change seemed to suffocate him as the walls moved in closer and closer. The dripping of the water fountain, the dripping of the water faucet, the dripping, the dripping of the water faucet sounded more like bombs <clears throat> crashing as he grabbed his ears trying to muffle the excruciating noise of nothingness. Grady let out a scream of desperation, then all fell silent. You know what you gotta do, he whispered to himself. Grady grabbed his car keys and dizzily walked out into the night. Oh, shit. He was absolutely shit-faced drunk. He had no business driving. He was raging and at a point of no return. Swerving on the vacant roads, he raced to Peter and Clara's house to reclaim his wife and stepson. As he pulled up to their home, he saw Josephine and Marcus taking their luggage out of the car. Grady instantly slowed down and turned off his headlights. He then hopped out of the car and headed straight for Josephine. 
Get in the car now, Josie, he barked at her. Damn it, Josie, get in the car or so help me. He rose his fist up at Josephine and was about to strike her when Marcus stood in his way. We ain't going nowhere with you, Marcus said firmly. We both tired of you, Grady. Just go away. In that moment, Grady began to punch Marcus in his face. He snatched up the poor boy and choked him. Josephine screamed and hit him in the back of his head. Grady grabbed Josephine and pulled her by her hair, trying to drag her to his car. Josephine closed her eyes tightly as tears streamed down her face. She kicked and tried to get out of Grady's grip. Suddenly, she felt his hold on her release. She opened her eyes to see Peter stomping him out. Peter swooped Grady up off the ground by his neck and said, let me see you try that shit on a real man. Grady's eyes grew wide with fear as he wriggled away from Peter. He had never seen the pastor behave that way, and it frightened him to his core. He obediently got in his car and sped away. He now sat in the vacant blockbuster lot, rubbing the barrel of that 44 mag against his temples, crying into a bottle of half-drunk Jack Daniels, searching for a reason not to pull the trigger. His mind went to a happier time with Josephine before he lost his job, before he started doing drugs, before his mother died. Then he traveled to a dark the, then he traveled to the darker recesses of his mind. He remembered his own abusive father and the hatred he had for his mother for never standing up for him the way that Josephine stood up for Marcus. He remembered the respect that Marcus had for him in the beginning that was long gone now. The looks of admiration were now repressed were now replaced with disappointment, fear, and disgust. Grady began to dry heave at the realization that it was all his own fault, all of it. As Grady started to come to his senses, he felt Peter's right hook and the sharp ache in his side and legs from being stomped out by the pastor of all people. Deep inside, he knew he deserved that beating. He knew he deserved more than that. Disgusted in himself, he threw the bottle of liquor down and sobbed into the palms of his shaking hands. I gotta fix this. I can fix this. I can't. I can fix this. Grady began to think of ways that he could get his family back. He decided that he would join Alcoholics Anonymous group, clean himself up, and get a job. He began to feel a little optimistic as the chill of the frigid night wind ripped through his soul, and he shuddered. He slept alone, but hopeful. He slept alone, but hopeful in his car that night. Chapter five. Give me an eight count. Josie smiled softly as she looked down at her own reflection. She felt accomplished. She hadn't spoken to Grady since that crazy night at her sister's house. Josie began to work again. She and Marcus moved out of Peter and Clara's to a beautiful condo, not far from her sister. She was even contemplating pursuing her life's dream of being a singer. She had, she had abandoned her calling due to her tumultuous relationship with her estranged husband. Josie was the lead singer of La Femme Noire, a successful jazz quartet. Her music career regrettably ended abruptly. Grady's insecurities and violent behavior caused so much drama within the group that Josie decided to leave it all behind. Josie's eyes began to water at the memories of the rush of being on stage singing and scatting as the audience ate up every note that flowed from her soul so effortlessly. Josie was a timeless beauty who would wear the finest garments. She had a true glow and a smile that gleamed like the sun over clear ocean water. Josie felt a twinge of disappointment and pain because she couldn't help but to remember how it ended. Saturday nights at the Cotton Club were always packed. The familiar scent of expensive perfumes, colognes, good liquor, and cigars filled the air. The hustle and bustle of the way staff seemed to go in tune with the opening act's tradition of, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Do I, 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 do I. Well-dressed gents and even better dressed ladies danced, laughed, and sweated their troubles away on the floor. The joyous clinks of glasses and cheers as couples announcing their, man their marriage engagements to their friends elevated the atmosphere. Jorge, the timid young stagehand, hurriedly made his way back to the dressing room. Um, Miss Josie, you gotta be on stage in about five minutes. They finna wrap up, Jorge said, almost out of breath. Aye, sugar, I'll be there in just a minute. 
said Josie. Jorge gave a nod and was on his way. Josie sat up on a mauve silk upholstered chair with gold trim and pulled her black lace and pulled up her black lace stockings. She slipped on her gold Salvatore Ferragamo heels and briefly admired how they looked on her feet. As she stood, the dressing room door flung open and there was Grady full of rage. Hey baby, Josie cooed cautiously as she did her best to soothe Grady. She was honestly frightened as she had no idea what set him off that time. Don't hate baby me, you cheating ass bitch, Grady sniped. Admit it, Josie, I know you fucking red. He sneered at Josie with menacing intent. He stormed over to her, and before, he could, and before she could even respond, he slapped her so hard that it knocked her earring from her left ear. Just as he drew back to throw another crushing blow, Josie's bandmate Phil rushed into the door and grabbed Grady by the collar of his shirt. Miles and Red filed in closely behind. Miles went to check on Rosie. Miles went to check on Josie while Red helped Phil restrain him. Man, what's going on in here? Asked the startled Red. I know you've been fucking my woman, you slick talking son of a bitch. Grady yelled as he tried to lunge at Red. He couldn't get as he couldn't get far as Phil had his shirt by a strong grip. Phil was a big guy that couldn't easily be subdued. Man, what in the fuck is you talking about? Red asked, bewildered. I never touched Josie. Red shook his head in utter amazement at how wrong Grady was about the entire situation. Somehow Grady didn't know this, but Red was a gay man. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it was pretty obvious. She's like a sister to me. You out your goddamn mind. Grady looked around at their collective grimaces of disgust and instantly felt stupid. He was visibly embarrassed. I tried to tell you nothing was going on, baby, Josie said as she slowly brought her eyes up to meet his. You got it all wrong. Grady snatched himself from Phil and quickly left. Looking like a whole bitch. Hey, he can't keep bringing his goma pile looking ass in here causing problems, Josie. This shit ain't right, Phil said. Yeah, I know that's right. Motherfucker done almost messed up my $700 suit, Red said as he smoothed out the front of his suit jacket. Man, damn your suit. He keeps hitting on Josie, said Miles as he took Josie's hand in his. His eyes pleaded with her. You know you'd be a plum fool to go back to him. You can stay here with me. I mean, with us. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. Hold on one second. Hold on. A little sparkling award. I was a little poor. Excuse me, I was a little parched. <clears throat> Miles was a strikingly handsome man with his inviting brown eyes that held so much care in them. He had beautiful eyelashes, smooth skin, the color of warm caramel, and facial features that looked as if God took a little extra time making him. Everyone knew that Miles had a thing for Josephine, except Josephine. <laughs> she was so oblivious to Miles' feelings for her because he never spoke up on it. He was devastated when he found out that she up and married that clown Grady. And now, ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage for your listening pleasure, Le Femme Noir could be heard resonating from the stage. Josie lowered her eyes to the hardwood floor of the dressing room. She gently removed her hand from Miles's. I gotta go, Josie said as tears began to drown her eyes. I understand how things look right now. Grady's going through some things. She realized that she was beginning to sound like a broken record as she made her way towards the door. I'm all he's got. And just like that, Josie walked away from the Femme Noir for good. About two weeks after Josephine left Grady, she found herself at the Cotton Club for drinks. <clears throat> she just wanted to go to the place that she felt most alive. Everyone was so happy to see her. She ordered her usual, a Hennessy, one ice, and of course, the bar wouldn't accept her money. 
The place hadn't changed as much as she did. Three drinks later, Josie was on the dance floor, smiling and enjoying the band. Hello, stranger, said a friendly voice. Josie jumped slightly, partially from being startled, but mostly excitement. She turned and saw Maya. He pulled her close to him, embraced her. Josie allowed Miles to wrap his arms around her. He had barely aged at all, and he smelled so damn good. <clears throat> the two of them seemed to float to a table where they began to catch up. They talked for hours. The busy club slowly began to dwindle down to the last few. The songs got slower, and soon there was just the two. You still singing, Josie? Miles inquired. Josie looked at him and sighed deeply. <sighs> it's been so long since I've sung, or even felt like singing. Josie placed her hand. Josie placed her hands in her lap. Well, that ends tonight. Come on, get up here. It'll be like old times. Miles said as he stepped up onto the stage. He grabbed his sax and began to play. God bless the child that's got his own, that's got his own. One of Josie's favorite songs. All right, all right, Josie said as she made her way to the microphone. Give me an eight count. Before she knew it, <laughs> she was on that stage singing as if she had never left. Miles stared at her in awe. Josie's voice was like finely crafted mahogany. Her pure energy dripped all over the microphone and blessed Miles' ears. He had missed her dearly. Miles never did get married. He barely even found true interest in any of the girls that followed the band. He knew exactly who he needed and here she was standing before him as if she were only gone a minute. That settles it. You gotta come back next week. Miles' eyes were lit up like a Christmas tree. Josie gave Miles a slight glance. Well, she said with shy uncertainty. Miss Josie, you're on in five, said Jorge. Josie gave herself a reassuring look in the mirror, turned to Jorge, and with the brightest smile said, All right, sugar, I'll be there in just a minute. Jorge flashed her the biggest smile she'd ever seen him make. I'm so glad to see you back, Miss Josie. Knock them dead. Aw, oh, snap, y'all. All right, so it looks like Grady, Grady trying to get his family back. While it looks like Josephine and Miles may have other plans. Come back Wednesday. For chapters six through seven, so y'all can see how it all comes about. <laughs> all right, y'all. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's installment, or this week's uh, first installment of Mistaken Identity, chapter four through five. And that was, um, you know what you got to do, and give me an eight count. <laughs> so, all right, let's get it. And so I'll see y'all back here, same time, same place on Wednesday. Much love, y'all. Thank you so much. I really appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all so very much. And I love that y'all come through and listen to my story. And as I said again, this post will be up. And next week, it's gonna get uh, really deep into the erotica part. Or Wednesday, I think. Yeah, I think Wednesday is the chapters where it starts getting kind of freaky dicky. So, like I said before, this is not for kids. This is not for kids. This is not for kids. This is for grown folks. Excuse me, grown adult folks. Okay, grown folks. Strong. All right, y'all. <laughs> Much love. Love y'all again. Bye. We'll see you next time. I ain't gonna say bye. I'm gonna say see you next time. All right, y'all. That was too much fun. Hold on, wait. Before I end it, hold on. Before I end it, I'm gonna look at y'all and see if there's any comments. Why Lex is showing up? Girl, I don't even know. <clears throat> Tripping, I had to unplug her head. Like, girl, what is you doing, Chad? What is you doing? <laughs> I love y'all so much. Thank you so much. Okay, Alexa was showing her little tail, ain't it? Child, I wouldn't have had to unplug it. I'm going to plug it back up, though, because that's my bitch. I love Miss Alexa. That's my girl. But she's tripping sometimes. I think it's, I think
think you're not in your, I ain't bullshitting y'all, but on some real shit, I really think that my Alexa is hacked sometimes. Because, you know what I'm saying, just out the blue. Anybody else experiencing that? Out the blue, the motherfucker just turned off. Ain't nobody said Alexa. Didn't nobody even say her name, Chad. Didn't nobody say Alexa. But anyway, whatever, what have you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, I love y'all so much. Until next time. That was cute. I love. Oh, this.